Hello everybody, Twitch Nitro here, and welcome back to another Invention Room video. Today we are taking a closer look, as promised, at the uh, the AFK Looting 3 system that uh, enables you to plug it into um, AFK mob farms and uh, lets you get all the goodness of looting uh, on, on those mobs while you're away from your computer or just listening to music in, a, in another tab. So, um, first of all, let's have a look at this test setup over here. I have the entire system. This will be a detailed look. I'll be going over the mechanics and such. But first, I want to give you an overview, just in case you uh, missed my uh, automatic um, rabbit foot farm. Um, so, in this example, we'll be hooking it up to like some hostile mob farm. So, just imagine that this tube leads up to your pref preferred mob farm, you know, like uh, creepers... Um, Witches, zombies, uh, skeletons, Enderman maybe. Well, actually no, not Enderman. There's water down here. Although you could change the um, the chamber setup quite a little. Uh, this has all been rigged up especially for hostile uh, a hostile mob farm here. We have down here a uh, a counter that will count the number of mobs, and after a threshold is reached, it will release your player. So this water current will take your play around, and over here is the actual looting setup. Uh, there's probably not a sword in here. No, it's just just an item frame from testing. Uh, that'll be in that one too, because this was cloned over. So it's quite simple. This is a loading mechanism here. You would press the button, and it would load you in. Um, what, we, what you do is you'd prepare yourself here. You'd fill your inventory up. So no other items can be except in the first slot where you would just have your empty fist. And you would hold right click on this and then start your AFK um, by probably shifting to another tab. You, um, there are, there's videos out there that can teach you how to, uh, how to successfully AFK and actually minimize Minecraft and still be doing stuff in it. Um, in my previous video I actually le left a link to that. Uh, so... It puts you in here, and obviously there's this barrier here stopping you from actually going anywhere, so you'd just be looking down, right-clicking constantly. Um, your mob farm, however, would be running, and things would be dropping down, going into here, counting it, and once the threshold is reached, this piston will pull away, and you will begin your journey, your miraculous journey. Iron bars are placed in every corner on the inside turn. And that's because if they're full blocks there, I found that your character bumps into the full blocks and it moves your position. Uh, this pressure plate is used as a trigger to reactivate this circuit here, which pushes this back in. Over here, we go for the trigger, go through the trigger for the delivery mechanism. This top one will have TNT in it. Uh, oh well, this, this bottom one will have TNT in it. This top one will have uh, flame uh, fire charges inside, and so you'll pick up the TNT first, your right clicking will happen, you'll put down the TNT, you'll grab the fire charge, light it, keep on going, push this button, a dispenser underneath this soul sand will push up a block, um, these note blocks are here, for a reason that I'll get into once we actually look at, into more detail, and you'll come across here and deposit the I, uh, the looting sword into the item frame after the TNT's gone off and then the uh, dispenser will shoot a snowball relinquishing your precious looting sword and putting it back into the system for another run and of course you will have then completed a full circuit and you'll be back here now, all the things will be dead down here so this system will no longer be activated and uh, and yeah although actually I should have put in a, uh, a mono stable here uh, you might want to actually do that because this needs to fire once and not have a continuous continuous fire here so probably want to change this up and put like a piston or what have you and uh, this this line would have to be moved probably to uh, to this side so it activates this uh, that's off so when it comes through here it will activate this and only activate it once there we go. In fact, actually, this has just activated it, as you can see, piston back. And yeah, so there's a little bit of a problem with my example set up here, as I just realized, but it's it's not really a, a major problem. So let's take a closer look at the two different systems. 
the start off down here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If I grab some zombies and throw a bunch in here. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Fill it up with zombies. There's one bar. If I fill it up with some more zombies. There's two bars. And even still, throw in a bunch more. And there's three bars. It's just sort of flicking backwards and forwards. Which can be a problem uh, in the system with this kind of setup. Put a few more in there. There we go, now it's stable. Occasionally a baby can kind of flick through here. I'm not sure how, it's only half a block. I'm pretty sure babies aren't half a block high. But uh, yeah, let's get rid of those. <laughs> we don't need them here. There we go, put it back. I don't know why I keep my test world in hard mode anyway. Um, so into the main attraction for this video. Uh, down here, the locking mechanism for this is very simply wired up. It's using this uh, this method here where one side will be powered. So what, what's happening here is this side is currently powered by this torch that's on, which keeps this torch off. If you power this side with a... It's you! Stop interrupting my video. I'll teach you to get in the way of learning. <laughs> uh, so if we switch this, what will happen is obviously this line will turn on, um, which will turn off this torch and allow uh, this torch to turn on, which will keep this powered. And that is just hopping up this step, which runs directly into this block. We do have to have a solid block here to stop this side false powering this so remember that there needs to be a solid block above this and that will be going up a small torch tower it just torches up once and leads into uh, this which obviously powers or unpowers the piston with this block the whole farm here to get the water streams right one two three four five six seven so that's one two three four five on the inner row here and five on this in a row, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down. The corners, I like to set them up with a block that holds water and a block that holds water. So, so the water will be running in through here. Uh, we can remove this setup. This is fairly self-explanatory. This lever is on. And it push, and so you can push your character into the corner. It just keeps you fairly centered in the middle of the block. Um, it's not massively important, but centering your character correctly uh, can make a difference. So I've put a sign here and a sign here to hold the water block, which flows to the end, and then a sign here and the pressure plate here to hold the water block as it flies through here. Uh, we can empty the inventory now, I think. And again, as I said before, these iron bars, very crucial, or else your character will go out of sync and won't be in the correct position when right-clicking. The orientation of the, um, the farm does kind of matter as well, because the button in here, the stone button or the wooden button, whichever you choose to use, uh, its orientation changes depending on the, the sort of sun. So you can build it in both diff in both orientations, but your mouse cursor has to be slightly different in each of them. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. Just sort of a once it's on its side, it should still work. Try and aim for the middle of the button in the delivery system. That's why the delivery system actually uses a button as well, so you can be sure that you'll be lined up with this button correctly. Now uh, coming round, we have soul sand. The soul sand's obvious job is to slow down the player. Um, to make the right clicking of the item frame slightly easier and to make sure that uh, you get the item correctly as well and also uh, <laughs> to make sure that the TNT goes off before. Um, the system here is quite interesting. The note blocks are very important. Um, if you have a sword guess it wasn't a good idea for me to clear my inventory. If you have a sword and you're right clicking and you go over a normal block, it will cause you to block. 
And once you're blocking, if you just hold down right click, it doesn't matter what you face into, you will always be blocking. Uh, which will of course stop the system from working completely, because you won't deposit the item so these need uh, into the item frame. So these need to be uh, to be note blocks or a block of this type. I use note blocks because it doesn't affect comparators. So down here it's very important to have a note block. Um, so as you can see, if I right click and hold right click on these, it will keep the sort of right clicking use mentality uh, that that has because you see the the note blocks need to keep uh, need to check if they're being tuned or not but they won't actually tune them because they've they've got blocks on top of them so they're deactivated um, these half slabs are just so it doesn't get in the way if you had a full block here it can get in the way of your your angle so they're there uh, to protect the button from water we have a second item stream so the sign up here stops the water coming back, and there's a sign here to stop the water going down into the uh, kill chamber. Um, the item frame needs to receive one snowball to it, uh, and that's that's important because a second snowball will knock off the item frame. There'll be an item frame in here, no doubt. Yep, there we go. <laughs> but one it uh, one item in the item frame. There we go. As you can see, it will be shot off and immediately sucked in by the hopper. You can put a hopper here. Uh, in my other design, I don't have a, a hopper underneath the repeater, but you can put a hopper underneath the repeater. And as you can see, this is just using a very simple uh, uh, comparator setup. It checks the, that there's actually power coming from the item frame, sends it into the block, sends it into here, repeater, repeater. Um, this setup is probably the easiest sort of to set up. If you have two here, uh, the signal isn't strong enough really so you can't sort of do this kind of thing you need you need really to have it set up like this um, I haven't put any kind of delay here it's not really important to, to have a delay here just have the two repeaters you can probably even use comparators there and it, it wouldn't really matter and so yeah that's that's kind of uh, how the the system works. It took me a very long time to figure out how close together I can ha make this whole system, and how I can um, how I can just combine the different components necessary. You know, I went through using tripwire over here as well to using other means, and I found that the, uh, using a pressure plate on the soul sand and stuff, and I found that the button approach is is definitely the most simple uh, design. Uh, down here actually, just as a secondary thing, if you funnel them down the if you funnel choose to funnel them down the actual TNT pipe itself, you're gonna have a bad time. Because babies I found in testing can sometimes get into this. As well as you'd need a you'd need a shut off because uh, you need to shut off the mob flow uh, down the hole as well if you did that because uh, Things coming down can explode or shoot you or hurt you, and if they do hurt you, you can be pushed back. Um, or they can land on the TNT as you place the TNT, and then you have a little bit of a, another problem, <laughs> even more of a problem. So using the double sort of thing here, where the the mob will be falling down this tube, and the TNT will fall down this tube and get pushed by the water at the bottom. So that is a very fast paced <laughs> I think I talked very quickly there but hopefully this should contain all the information you need to set up your own uh, I have been considering working on a version that works in the nether uh, which doesn't use waters uh, waters? it doesn't use water <laughs> and uh, might use something like pistons with slime blocks although I've been running into inconsistencies with that so maybe you guys can try yourself at making a uh, a looting 3 uh, AFK system in the nether. Um, yeah. Also in this setup that you might want to try and do is some method of um, getting the EXP up. Uh, I would suggest setting it up here on this side. Let's go back in. There we go. I would suggest setting it up here. Maybe you can create a sort of elevator uh, using slime blocks. Sort of where you push you shoot up the EXP, and then the e, there's a hole here, 
and maybe it's collected through this hole to the player, maybe if it's shot up. Uh, up to you. If you want to see if you can try and install a setup like that, that would probably be pretty cool. And I would definitely want to see it if you did. But that's all it is for this episode. And I guess uh, I will see you guys next time. Happy hunting. Bye.